snakes. One of the most feared groups of animals to ever slither across our planet, haunting the imaginations of humankind for thousands of years, from myths and legends of their deceitful nature and insatiable hunger, down to our very nightmares. However, there was one snake millions of years ago that would truly make people's skin crawl. That is, if they didn't die from sheer fright first. Or eaten. A snake so massive it would feast on elephants. A snake called Gigantophis. This ancient serpent's name shares an interesting parallel with the Egyptian eater of worlds, Apophis, or Apep, which is interesting considering the creature's Egyptian origins. Not only that, but the snake truly encompassed its mythical counterpart's great size, measuring an estimated length of over 35 feet, or 10 meters. That's longer than the longest snake alive being the reticulated python, with the largest specimens known to reach up to 20 feet on average. For over a hundred years, Gigantophis was considered the largest snake to ever exist. That is, until Titanoboa was discovered and broke the record with the length of 40 to 45 feet. Not much is known about Dicantophis, for this snake is only known from a couple of fragments, particularly vertebrae. However, despite the rarity of its remains, what these fragments do tell us allows us to paint a picture of this animal when it lived, as well as where it sits on the snake family tree. Based on the shape and structure of the vertebrae, Gigantophis is currently classified as a member of the Matstoid family. The Matstoid family of snakes is farther removed from the living members of the snake family tree, dating as far back as to the mid-Cretaceous period, to as recently as a few thousand years ago. These snakes were similar to constrictors in terms of their great size and likeliness for using constriction as a primary killing method. However, what sets these two groups apart in particular is that unlike modern constrictors, or boids if you want to be scientific about it, Madstoids were lacking in the specialized traits boids possess in swallowing larger prey. However, that by no means indicates that they didn't go after larger prey when the opportunity arose. In fact, the Wanambi from Australia is thought to have fed on humans. Another detail the fossil remains of Gigantophis tells us is its geographical range. Originally, it was thought that Gigantophis' range was restricted to northern Africa. This changed when the remains of another species of Gigantophis was discovered in Pakistan opening up the possibility that Gigantophis' wide range stretched from North Africa to the Middle East, and quite possibly greater expanses of South Asia. The fossil remains of Gigantophis itself date back to the late Eocene, around the time when mammals had just begun their ecological rise to power. During this time, the Earth was still relatively warmer than it is today, and as this climate was changing, forests that constricted mammals to smaller sizes began to disappear. With the newfound abundance of more open habitats, it promoted the growth of larger mammals. Many modern mammals can trace their evolutionary family trees back to their most basal members to this time, such as ungulates, primates, proboscideans, etc. Some of these animals happen to have the misfortune of living at the same time in place as Gigantophis, like Mirotherium, an early relative of the elephant that resembled a tapir. Using its massive body, Gigantophis would likely coil its body around its prey, slowly squeezing and suffocating them to death as it swallowed them whole. Sadly, like many species of the Eocene, Dicantovis fell into extinction thanks to climate change, as the world became a much drier place and its food supply began to disappear. Madstoids themselves would fall into extinction several millions of years later, dying out only 50,000 years ago. While Gigantophis may not be slithering the world today, it and its relatives still stand as terrifying testaments of snake evolution. One could say Gigantophis was truly a great serpent.